Hi everyone, it's time for another one of those magnificent and marvelous math lessons with Miss Antonia Bain. Let's get started. Our topic for today is multiplying fractions. Let's look at our lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, students will be able to multiply a fraction by another fraction, simplify fractions, and compose multiplication sentences based on fraction models. Take a look at this. Suppose you had to multiply four fifths by six sevenths. What would you do? Well, if you stick with this lesson, you will know how to multiply fractions in no time. To multiply fractions, we need to know there are three basic steps. Let's take a look at what these three steps are. When we want to multiply a fraction by a fraction, the first thing we must do is multiply the numerators. After we do that, the second step tells us to multiply the denominators. And the third step is to simplify if needed. That sounds pretty easy, right? Let's apply this now to our previous equation. 4 fifths times 6 seven. The first step says to multiply the numerators. 4 times 6 is equal to 24. Once we do that, step 2 says to multiply the denominators. 5 times 7 is equal to 35. One more step to go, guys. Our last step says we need to simplify if needed. What does that mean? When we simplify, we're asking ourselves, hmm, can this go any lower? Well, if we were to answer that question, our answer would be no. In order to simplify a fraction, there must be a number that will divide evenly into both the numerator and denominator so it can be reduced. And in this case, there is no number that will divide evenly into both 24 and 35. So that means that our answer is 25 35. This fraction is already in its simplest form. Let's try another one. Multiply these fractions. Hmm. That looks different from before. In this situation, we're given fraction diagrams, or some people say fraction models. The first thing we must do is identify the fractions given. Let's look at our first model. What fraction can we write to represent that model? If you said one out of two, or a half, you are correct. How did we get that? Well, the numerator, which is one, represents the amount of parts that is shaded in our fraction. And the denominator, which is two, represents how many total parts there are all together. That's how we got one half. We take one half and we now multiply it by this fraction. What fraction can we write to represent our second diagram given? Well, if you said 3 out of 4, you are correct. Remember, our numerator represents the amount of shaded parts and our denominator represents the total parts all together, 3 fourths. Now we can begin multiplying these fractions. Remember, there are 
three easy steps for us. Our first step says to multiply the numerators. And when we do that, one times three is equal to three. Step two says multiply the denominators. When we do that, two times four is equal to eight. Now our last step says to simplify if needed. And we already know that when we simplify, we're asking ourselves, can this go lower? In this situation, our answer is no. Remember, in order for a fraction to be simplified, there must be a number that will divide evenly into both the numerator and denominator. You're doing an awesome job. So because this fraction cannot go any lower, our final answer is 3 eighths. This fraction is already in its simplest form. Try this one on your own. Two fifths times three fourths. You should have your answer by now. Your brains, I know, they are just perka lurking. Let's quickly review the answer. Two times three, gives us six. Five times four gives us 20. So our answer, or our first answer, should be six out of 20. Now, we know that that can be simplified. That can go lower. There is a number that can divide evenly into both six and 20. Anyone knows what that number is? Well, if you said two, you are correct, boys and girls. When we take two and divide it into six, our numerator now becomes three. And when we take two and divide it into 20, our denominator now becomes 10. So our final answer, one simplified, is three hands. You did an awesome job. I know you now can multiply fractions just like that. So let's do a quick review. We know that there are only three easy steps to multiplying fractions. What are these three steps? We multiply the numerators, then we multiply the denominators, and lastly, we simplify only if needed. This lesson was created by Miss Antonia Bain.